How many of you remember those old commercials, E.F. Hutton? That, that goes back a little ways. They had a series of those. When E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody goes silent. People listen. I want to talk about when God speaks. I've got a two-part I'm going to do today and later in the month when I return on when God speaks. And I'm wondering, when God speaks, do we pause to listen to what he says? If the Christian doesn't know when God is speaking, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. Because we need to know what God wants, wants us to hear from his word and in prayer. So how does God reveal himself to us? Turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter one, the first two verses. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. God may not tell you all you want to know, but he will tell you what you need to know through his word in prayer and through his church as well. Our task is to listen, to listen to what he has to say. I remember years ago, someone once said, and I don't know where it originated, he said, you know, God made us with one mouth and two ears. Take a hint. Maybe we need to listen twice as much as we speak in our relationships and in our relationship with God as well. We need to also learn patience and depend on God's timing. God has perfect timing. Have you ever wanted to have a, an answer from God, but you want it now? Or you're wanting some direction uh, of his will in your life and you want it now and it might be he's simply saying just just wait just wait now may not be the best time it may be a little later I remember many times I have prayed in the past and, and expressed my desires to the Lord and after the fact looking back I was glad he did not answer me the way I wanted at the time because there were other circumstances I'd had no awareness of that might be coming into play. And he answered at his timing. And it was so much better. I remember asking God for something and later saying, God, I am so glad you did not give me what I asked at that moment. Because there were, there were things that could come into play I was unaware of and really turn what I thought would be a good thing could have been a very much a disaster. God's timing is so important. So we've got to learn patience in waiting. As the scriptures say, to be still and know that he is God. It's hard for us just to be still in this society. You go outside those doors, and it's rush here and rush there. And everybody's in a rush and in a hurry to get there and a hurry to get there. And everything's so fast paced. I can't even get in the car and, and just from here half a mile to the house without getting a phone call, a text, an email, or who knows what. Everybody's in a hurry. They want information. They want it now. There's some people who have texted me and I'm driving I wait till I'm at a place where I can respond. It might be 20 minutes. And then I get another text and another, well, where are you? Why aren't you answering? <laughs> they, want, they want answers now. We live in that kind of a culture and society of convenience and instant information, instant response. 
But if I respond instantly while I'm driving, do I not maybe endanger myself because I'm taking my eyes and attention and focus off the driving and I'm over here fiddling? I could get in a wreck. The timing is so important. The timing is so important. We've got to learn patience. Patience. So the first thing I want us to consider, and one of the ways God speaks, is God speaks through the Holy Spirit. When you became a Christian, you received the gift of the Holy Spirit. The apostles were promised power through the Holy Spirit. The apostles were promised that they could recall all things Jesus had taught them through the, through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so important even in our lives today. It is, it is sort of a spiritual conscious. And you can grieve the Holy Spirit by going against the will of God. So how does the Holy Spirit speak to us? He speaks to us through the word, through the scriptures. He can speak to us in prayer if we're really seeking. And let me just pause right here and say, and you've probably heard this before, in prayer, it's not just giving God a wish list of things you want. Prayer is a time of communication with God. It's, it's a relationship with God. You can let him know your heart's desires or your, your pains or your frustrations. But if you want to really, really hear him, you've got to be still. You need to get into the word and see how he might speak to you in those moments. Or he might be saying, just wait. Just wait a little longer. I came across this phrase, you never discover truth. Truth is revealed. It's revealed. God reveals his truth through his word. The Holy Spirit speaks that truth to a world to convict them of sin and speaks that truth to us through the Holy Spirit to encourage us, maybe to convict us, maybe to give us a little kick in the britches to get us moving, whatever the case may be. But when God reveals something about himself, he wants to increase our faith. You see, that's when, when truth is revealed, God reveals a little bit more about himself and his purpose is that our faith may grow and increase. Faith in what? Faith in him, faith in seeking his will, not our own. And that's how we should pray. Jesus gave us that great example in the garden, praying the Father's will, not his. You can let God know your aspirations and desires of your heart and so forth, but the real question is, are those things in harmony with God's will? And if you're in harmony with God's will, he is more likely to give you a more positive response to your prayers. But sometimes it might simply be yes, it might be no, or it might be wait, not right now. See, God sees the whole picture. He's in control of the whole picture. We just see a little part. And he can see circumstances and people and different situations that, that will come into control of of our lives that we can't see. And when he says, wait, it's because there's something better than if we receive it right now. So here's how it works. When God reveals himself, you need to believe God is who he says he is. You need to believe God is who he says he is. If you don't have that, there's no need proceeding. When God speaks and he says something about his own nature, you need to believe it. You need to believe it. You also need to believe that God can do what he says he can do. We have many examples throughout the scriptures, Old and New Testament alike, where God has intervened in the affairs of man, we call them miracles. 
And when he says he can do something, he does it. You also need to adjust your thinking in light of your belief. Adjust your thinking in light of this belief. See, everybody needs an adjustment from time to time. Uh, not long ago, I got oil changed, got the tires rotated, you know, and balanced. But you hit too many potholes, you need to get it back and have an adjustment, don't you? We need our thinking to have an adjustment from time to time. We are bombarded so much with things in the world to try to put fear into us. And it's happening right now, my friends, with a lot of this coronavirus stuff and the media and so forth and politicians of various sorts. And it doesn't matter what party. <laughs> Our world tries to bring fear. That's because the one behind it is an author of fear. God wants to bring peace. And that means we've got to adjust our thinking. To adjust our thinking, we've got to adjust our minds and what's feeding it. What's your mind feeding on? Is it the news, which you can get 24-7 on any channel? I remember when I was growing up, there were only three channels on TV. And you had to wait till 6 p.m. to get the news for 30 minutes or an hour. That was about the only time you got the news. Now we have it 24-7, not just on the TV, but on your cell phones. And they keep updating it. Every few minutes, you can get back on your cell phone, and there's another article about something. I think we have information overload. We're being brainwashed with information from the perspective of the world. So what are you feeding your mind? We need to get into the Word. We need, we need, to get, we need some healthy food for our minds. We've got to adjust our thinking. You also got to trust God and obey Him. Just like the old hymn, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. There's a lot of truth revealed even in that song. Trust and obey. Even if you don't make sense of it. Even if you're not sure. Trust and obey. God will find a way. Even if you think you're cornered and no way out, God can find a way. You remember the children of Israel and they left Egypt and they found themselves by the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army came. There was no way out. And they were all screaming, oh, we're going to die. We'd have it better off back in Egypt. Maybe Pharaoh will have mercy if we throw, you know, all kinds of, oh, they were afraid. Because they, they couldn't see a way out. But God already had it in mind. And then he revealed it. So many of them crying in fear. God's people. But Moses had faith. And there were a few, I think like Joshua, Caleb, the two that said they could take the land when the ten said they couldn't. I believe they believed. There was a remnant who believed God could provide a way even though they couldn't see it. And he did. I can't tell you the number of times I've seen God work from directions I could not foresee. Lord, how, how's this going to work out? I, I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know where the answer is. And all, all the ways I could foresee, I just don't see it happening. And all of a sudden, boom, here it comes from another place. He may not come through the door. He may come through a window. <laughs> and I just go, praise God. And I've seen that so many times, 
I, I, when I get into another situation, I think, Lord, you have come through time and time and time again in my life. And I may not see the answer right now because my emotions are welled up and I'm looking kind of foggy at things. But I trust in you that you have my best in mind. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. When you obey God, he does his work through you, oftentimes, and he will share with you more of who he is. You see, he wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want us to just bow down like the pagans did to idols. He wants to have a relationship. And when we trust and obey him, he often reveals a little bit more of his nature for our relationship. Now I find that fascinating. But your plans, whatever they may be, your purposes, whatever they may be, need to be in harmony with his will. or you'll not experience God working in your life. If you're not seeking the things he wants done, if you're not seeking his will, then it's going to be kind of difficult to experience his presence because you're not in harmony with his will. I came across this line, life is your opportunity to experience God at work. It's your opportunity to experience God at work. Secondly, God also speaks through the scriptures. He speaks through the scriptures. The Bible is God's holy word. As it says in 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 17, I believe, all scripture is God breathed. I love that phrase. It reminds me going all the way back to the creation of man. It says, God breathed the breath of life into him. You see, God's word brings life. It reveals life. It brings life. It sustains our life. And it describes God's complete revelation of himself to man. So you want to know more about who God is? Get into his word. It's alive. It's life-breathing, life-changing. Because the spirit works through the word. It's alive. Elsewhere it says the word is alive, like a double-edged sword. Cuts to the very core of our being. It's not just ink on paper. Perhaps some of you have experienced, maybe you've read a passage you've read many, many times before, but, but this time something just leaps out And hits your heart or your mind or your conscience in a way it hadn't before. Why is that? It's because it's alive. It's alive. So consider these things. We're going to go over a few steps here. And if you'd like to see them again, there is a bookmark for you on the connect table in the back. You can use the steps that are revealed on this thing and make any scripture you read an instant devotion or Bible study. So what are some, some of the things we need to do when we're seeking God's will through his word? First of all, does the text reveal something I should believe about God? Is there something in this text that I should believe about God? Does it reveal something I should praise or thank God for? Is there something I should pray about for others or myself? Is there something it reveals so that I can have a new attitude? Maybe I need to adjust my thinking and have a new attitude about something. Does it reveal something in which I should make a decision about? See, it's seeking a response. 
We're not to read and study God's word just for information and knowledge. That's good. We need that. But that's not the final step. The final step is what is my response? What is God calling me to do? And I wonder how many times maybe fall short of that step. Is there something I should do for Christ, others, or myself as a result of this text? What have I learned from there? And then it, it's not uh, on the screen, but on the bookmark, it'll say, it'll give you a suggestion on do at least one of these. Show an act of faith, praise, prayer, or thanksgiving. Be a doer of the word. Ask for forgiveness. Maybe there's something you need to ask God to forgive you about. Speak a word of encouragement. Don't you feel better when someone speaks a word of encouragement to you? Speak a word of encouragement to others. And show love. Not just say it, show it, do something. So be the doer of the word. Feel free to pick one of these up on your way out this morning. But you cannot understand the purposes and ways of God unless you see through the scriptures. Because it is God's revelation to us. The Spirit speaks to us through the scriptures. And if God has revealed a spiritual truth to you through a passage of scripture that you might be reading, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, you have encountered God himself working in you. It never ceases to amaze me. I know Mark and I were here one morning this past week and we were looking in the scriptures and something just, it's like a bell went off in my head. Ding! Wow! I hadn't thought of it that way. That was experiencing a God moment of revelation. And once God has spoken to you, are you listening? How you respond is crucial. When I was in Bible college, the president at the time was John Hasty. He used to be at a Bible college in Michigan. He came to help establish Central Florida Bible College, which later became Florida Christian College, and now it's Johnson University, Florida. But at the time, he was teaching a psychology class and some other classes, and he had glasses. And I remember two phrases I will never forget that he, he would repeat often. One, he would lower his glasses to the end of his nose and sort of look at you over the, the glasses and say, learn how you learn. I needed that my freshman year. I was not a real good student in high school, never did a research paper, never had to do footnotes, and now all of a sudden in my freshman year, I got to do a 25-page paper with references, footnotes, and all kinds of things, and I don't even have a computer. And other things that were tough, learning how to learn. I spent that whole first year learning how to learn. I remember that. And the other thing I remember him saying is, are you listening? Every once in a while he would pause, probably when he got that deer and headlights look from the front of the class, and say, are you listening? So when God speaks, are you listening? Or is it going in one ear and out the other, so to speak? How you respond is so crucial. To agree with God, you've got to change your understanding to agree with His. You see, you don't pray and say, God, I want you to agree with me. In your prayer, it should be, Lord, help me to agree with you. But too many people try to pray the other way around, backwards. They treat God as if He's a cosmic genie or Santa Claus that they give their wish list to. That's not the God of the Scriptures. The God of the Scriptures reveals himself to us and he wants us to conform to his will 
And that requires us to listen and respond. So always tie a revealed truth to your understanding of God and your relationship in Him. As it says in James 1, 21, or 22, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourselves. How many people hear the word? They hear it a lot. Maybe they read the scriptures. Maybe they got a Bible reading program. They try to read through the Bible in a year. I'm not a big fan of those, but... They're doing these things... They're hearing, they're hearing, but they're not doing. It says you're deceiving yourselves. James Elsewhere says faith without works is dead. See, when we hear the word which brings us faith, we've got to respond to it. That's crucial. What is our response? What is our action? What does God want me to do? So when God speaks, are you listening? Are you listening? You know, in our busy world, sometimes there's so much noise of one sort or another, it's hard to hear that still, small voice. So many distractions, so much activity, so much noise. Have you ever experienced you're in the same room with someone else, but there's noise going on? Maybe it's a kitchen. You got the blender going on. You got this going on. You got all these things going on. Maybe the radio is going on. And you're in the same room. You can see them and you see their mouth moving, but you can't really understand what they're saying. If you're casual about it, you won't. You really got to focus to hear them over the noise. But what's better? Get away from the noise. Step into the side room where it's quieter and you can hear more clearly. Maybe that's the response some of you need to make because there's so much noise in the world. You have got to make the effort to step into the side room so you can hear God more clearly and get away from the noise. Wherever that may be for you, maybe it's the closet, have a prayer closet, prayer room, whatever the case may be, to be still and hear God's voice, you've got to get yourself away from the noise and the distractions. Now, I'm no great financial planner. I'm not one necessarily to counsel for where do you want to invest your money in the stock market or bonds or mutual funds or who knows what. I don't even know if E.F. Hutton's still around. Maybe they are. People are very quick to listen to the counsel of an investment firm regarding the finances that they have, but they may not be so quick to listen to God. And I'll tell you what, God has a lot more wisdom even for your finances than the counsel of any financial advisor. So are you listening when God speaks? So as we prepare to close, I want you to give this thought. Ask yourself, take one of those bookmarks, look through that. Start your own devotional reading time. Maybe you're already in one. That's great. Take that little mark, that marker with you. Go through those series of questions and, and let that guide you into a closer relationship with God, into understanding the truth he's trying to reveal to you through that text and in your prayers, in changing your thinking to his thinking. But to do that, you have got to listen. I didn't say hear. I said listen. See, I can hear a lot of things in a room, but it doesn't mean it's got my attention. But if I am listening, I am focused on something in particular.
Are you focused on Jesus? I think one of my favorite stories about Peter, a man who seemed to be a man of extremes at times. Either he was on that mountaintop peak on a spiritual high, and the next moment he could be on a spiritual low. And I, I, I can relate to that somewhat. But when they were out on that boat in that storm and they saw Jesus coming and they were afraid for their lives and then Jesus was walking on the water and that scared them. They thought maybe that was a ghost. And he says, don't be afraid, it's I. And Peter says, if you let call me to come to you. Peter got out of the boat. The others didn't. Peter got out of the boat and he's walking on water. It was great. Yeah, until the noise, the distractions, and his mind and, and eyes were taken off of Jesus, and he became more fearful of the wind and the waves. And what happened? As soon as he took his eyes off Jesus, I'm drowning. Help me, Lord. At least he had the sense to put his eyes back on Jesus and call for help, and Jesus lifted him up. 